Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And welcome to another quick little episode on uh, battery basics. Today we're going to talk about uh, something that uh, is sometimes overlooked by people we talk to, and that is the uh, cell voltage. The figure that is normally uh, bounced around is the nominal voltage. But you have to remember there's a range. You have a minimum cell voltage, you have a maximum cell voltage. And when you multiply that out times the number of cells that you have in your pack, it can vary quite a bit. And so in the example that we're going to show you in a moment, uh, on a 50 cell pack, this range of voltage can be 50 volts. So it's something you need to keep in mind, and so uh, stay with us. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, the voltage range of lithium iron phosphate batteries. All right. So it's, it's, it's fairly obvious that our pack voltage is going to be, is going to equal, be equal to the individual cell voltage times the number of cells. And so, it's just simple multiplication. But what are we going to multiply? The cell voltage of a lithium iron phosphate cell, nominally, is 3.3 volts. But the maximum that we charge them to is 3.5 volts. So when it's first charged, uh, those cells will each be 3.5 volts. And then there's a minimum that we will never discharge beyond. Matter of fact, we don't take ours down this low even, but the maximum that you can discharge it to is 2.5 volts. So if we take that and multiply that out by the number of cells, Here's what it looks like on a 50 cell pack. We'd have a nominal 165 volts, but we'd have a maximum of 175 volts and a minimum of 125 volts. So most of the time uh, when we're you know, driving around and so forth, uh, we're gonna be in the 165 volt range. But once the pack has been fully charged, we could have 175 volts. And if we discharge the pack completely, we could have 125 volts. So, that means, you know, I mean, you know, so what, huh? Well, the reason that's important is you have to remember that we have to make sure that all of our components, whether it be the inverter, the controller, DC to DC converters, your charger, uh, anything that uh, uh, your heater, uh, air, electronic air conditioning, power steering, um, you have to make sure that these things are compatible with this voltage range. You don't want to have something that's, you know, uh, rated at 100 and 65 or 170 volts and have a pack that when fully charged will be 175 volts or something that would when you got down to 130 volts it shuts off um, and 150 volts and it shuts off because you're thinking hey I got a 165 volt pack and so uh, this is just a reminder when you're designing and doing your purchasing that you get components that are compatible with the big picture. Well, I hope you enjoyed the little reminder on those things that sometimes get forgotten when we're um, ordering components or putting together a design for a conversion. But these things are important. can cause some headaches if you don't take them into consideration. So anyway, 
Hope to see you soon. Uh, we're still waiting on parts for our BW Thing project. Hopefully they'll be here before too long and we can start putting that together. Uh, so until then, I'm Richard with Evie for You Custom Versions. See you next time.